I came to see so you last week. I was 100% better. It's the first time in four months I've actually slept well. Wow. So massive difference there. This is a great teaching video. In this video, what you'll notice is Brody's having weakness of the muscles around his left shoulder. What I'm attempting to demonstrate here is you can find areas of dysfunction that are causing areas of dysfunction somewhere else. Let's watch this case study and see if you can answer the question I'll ask later on. This is my patient Brody. Brody's come in today to have his left shoulder and his hips checked. First, we're going to examine Brody. I had a suspicion that Brody was having some type of TMJ issue, so I stuck a tongue depressor in his mouth to gap his jaw. I went back and rechecked all his muscles. They facilitated, so he went from weakness to strength with a tongue depressor in his mouth. Then I went back and did something called an optokinetic tape. This is down into the right to help mimic movement for the left posterior semicircular canal. And I adjusted Brody's right TMJ. I did trigger point therapy on the muscles of mastication in his oral cavity and on his skull. I did a thoracic distraction. I did a left-sided C7 adjustment. And lastly, I blocked Brody to untorque his pelvis. This is that case study. Brody here comes from LA. <laughs> and he used to have Franco Colombo yeah, for, as his uh, chiropractor. For 25 years. When I found you, I instantly knew you were the man. <sighs> Push up. Go. <laughs> push up. Go. I push out. Yeah. Don't let me pull. Okay. No, I have nothing else. Yeah. Push up, bro. Go push this way. Okay. You ready? <laughs> yeah. Go. All right, let's discuss Brody's case for a moment. Brody has global inhibition. All of his muscles are not working properly except his right pectoralis muscle. Also a left-sided hip flexor weakness. So we're seeing an inhibition of his left side. Brody also explains during his exam that he has left hip pain and left shoulder pain. So when we test those muscles, what we notice is that they are also weak. I place a tongue depressor to gap his jaw. The jaw is impacting and causing his body not to respond properly. What happens is his left pec is not working before the exam. After we place the tongue depressor in his mouth, the left pec does not fire up. However, all of his other muscles do. <sighs> Keep it there though, I wanna see something. Okay. Don't let me push. Okay. All right, fix it. Don't let me pull. Okay. Keep it there. Push up. Okay. Up. Great. Push up. Wonderful. Push up. Good. Push up. Okay, so your jaw's up. Okay. Push up. This is an optokinetic tape. We're going down into the right. And it's to stimulate left posterior semicircular canal motion. Usually this type of motion or movement fires up posterior sure. muscles. In Brody's case, that would be his latissimus dorsi sure. muscles, which are necessary for stabilization of that shoulder. What is interesting is he did have an increase in strength or facilitation of that left pectoralis muscle. I did not anticipate that. This is a simple illustration to show what Brody was seeing. We were going down into the right, and this was causing his eyes to jump. He would look at each red, and then jump to the next red, and then jump to the next red. And this was to mimic, once again, motion of the brain and the neck and head with movement. Here I'm looking at Brody's TMJ. Typically with a patient like this, I would prefer to adjust on the left side. However, his jaw is disarticulating and it's going towards the right, not the left. So I'm going to adjust on the right side. While it's not what I neurologically would prefer to do, it's what he's showing on the table at this point in time. You warm? I don't even know, that was just weird. That was awesome. <laughs> Arm straight, push with me. Oh, that's a lot better. That's a lot better. Arm straight. Push, push your hip. Oh my god, that's crazy. Yeah. What the hell was that? Well, your jaw's out. That is crazy. Oh, close. Forgive me. Five, four, three, two, one. Five, four, three, two, one. You'll like me when you get off the table. Okay. okay. Ooh. <laughs> Did you get warm? Yeah. Yeah, you did, right? 
Yeah. Okay. Let's check your arm out. Okay. Push towards me. That's so much better. It's crazy. Go walk for me for a little bit, and then we're gonna. How do you feel? I mean, I feel good. I, mean, I felt so good from last time. It was so much better. I mean, last so much better. Quick question. Why not adjust both sides of the jaw, both sides of the neck, and both sides of the pelvis? Why do any muscle testing or exam at all? Oh, that was crazy. On your back. Okay. Straight. Okay. Push towards your hip. Okay. That's, that's better. better. Okay. That's so much better. Let me start. So at this point during our examination, Brody has all of his major muscle groups that are facilitating properly, and I'm checking for something called the gallant reflex. His gallant reflexes are abnormal. When I make this stroke on his low back, he should have a weakness of his hamstring muscle. He does not. I place the blocks in until we find that weakness that is normal with this test, and that I leave Brody in that position for a while to allow his pelvis to untorque. When you first tested my left side of my at my arm, I mean, it felt like literally I, had, I couldn't have worked a two pound dumbbell. And then when you finished, I felt like it feels almost strong again, like not 100 percent, but really, really, really different. I, I've seen a, I, I saw a physical therapist where I thought did a good job. So at least he got me out of some pain when you were gone. But nothing like this. This has been amazing. Yeah, that was crazy. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was spectacular. Thank you.